finding my first compiler bug. So my name is Braden Ganetsky. Uh, this is my first talk. Um, and so for my first talk, I thought I'd be talking about another first, which is my first ever compiler bug. So I'll be, uh, I'll be talking about a parser combinator library that I've been writing over the past year or so. Um, it's been a lot of fun if you like parser combinators. Um, so, the, <laughs> so this one right here is just an example in my library. Um, you have uh, a string with the user defined literal one, which gives you a one char parser. It parses any of those characters. Uh, the unary plus, which uh, Visual Studio IntelliSense really doesn't like, and so that's why I used it as a screenshot, because it hates my library. Um, that gives me a one or more parser, so it parses any of those, uh, or sorry, one or more of those characters. And then I use my join modifier to get it from a vector of string view back down to a string view. Um, to use my parser, I call dot parse on it. I give it a string. Um, so if you give it this string, 123e plus 10, well, because the parser parses um, one or more digits, 0 through 9, this should give me, if I print it out, um, it should give me 123 parsed, and then remaining is e plus 10. Um, this result type is essentially just an optional uh, outfitted with another, um, another function dot remaining, uh, just so I can grab the remainder and you know, actually use it for useful things. So this is sort of what a lot of the stuff in my library looks like. Um, it's just for my own use. So if you don't like it, you can tell me, but I, I, I like it anyway. I won't change it. Um, but I'm going to be dropping down to a simpler example here. This simpler example is just a one char parser. This is where I found my bug. So I have my user defined literal underscore one gives me a parser that parses either A or B or C. Um, and then, oh, and then again, um, you know, I will call parse on this parser, just the character A, keeping it very simple. And let's print out success if it works, and let's print out failure if it didn't. What's it going to print? Failure. No. <laughs> it's, it's successful. Um, so what's kind of cool about my library, too, uh, is that it also works at compile time, so I can static assert uh, that this parse works. Um, so I can do it at compile time and at runtime. Um, and so here's where we see problems that will start in a minute. Before I had my user defined literal, um, I just before I put that in uh, into my library, I just had to use the type directly. So the type is called one char, very creative, um, just like that. I was using my library quite a lot this past December for advent of code. And in advent of code, I like to you know, keep very good programming standards, so const correctness and, and all that. And in doing that, I end up using a lot of immediately invoked lambdas. So if I put this entire thing inside of an immediately invoked lambda expression, what's going to print? Failure. <laughs> Failure. So this parsed at compile time correctly, and at runtime it parsed incorrectly. Like this should be, this should be an impossible state, um, and I found a compiler bug. Um, so a little bit upsetting for my workflow, but kind of uh, a rite of passage, um, so kind of nice. Just simplifying, uh, simplifying this down into um, an example, let me do something really cool. Ooh, Barry taught me this today. I'm really excited. Um, so this is just simplifying the example, getting rid of all the parsers and stuff, just generalizing. So we need a structural type. That's the first thing we need out of three. Um, it just wraps an int. That's all we have. I need a concept. Uh, the simplest possible concept I can make is true. So that's it. And then I need my checker type. Uh, and this checker needs to take a structural type as a non-type template parameter. Um, it needs to be constrained. That matters. Um, and then in my check, I'm just making sure that i is equal to what I thought it was. And somehow, uh, this causes a compiler bug. And um, or sorry, th this is a bug. And I ended up finding out that what's really happening is that the non-type template parameter, the structural type, is being zeroed out. So here you go. You can have different results at runtime and at compile time. And as of today, this is still a bug in Visual Studio. So thanks so much. <laughs>